This like wearable wrap scarf situation is the most elegant, luxurious, sexy, effortless top for fall that you can completely customize to your own taste with any fabric that you want and wrap it a million ways. I'm obsessed. Happy Sunday. I am thrilled that you're here for this video because it is about to be one of your new favorites. If this is your first video here, welcome. This is the DIY designer. My name's Orly. So nice to meet you. I release a brand new video every single week. Every Sunday, you can expect from me either a DIY or personal style content or styling hacks. And that is because my purpose, my goal in life is to get you to embrace your one of a kind sense of style. That is your unique style language. And all I want is for you to uncover it and then speak it with confidence and make sure that every piece in your closet is expressing that. Today's DIY was actually inspired by two things. My mom had this scarf with sleeves on the end that she wears all the time. And it's kind of like a scarf that then goes down to the, to the sleeves. And I've always loved it and had photos of it. And in my mind was like, I need to make that one day. And then it was reminded when a bunch of people sent me a knit version of this as well. And most of them are just long enough to wrap it once and then back down to the other side. It can make kind of like a shrug. And I thought, well, that's really cool. And that'll be really fun for fall. But then I thought to myself, self, what if you make it like twice as long and you could wrap it twice and you could create all of these really elegant drapes. Now, in order to make this the same length as mine, you're going to need three yards of continuous fabric. If you are on a really tight budget, you can of course buy a yard and a half, cut it, and sew it together. The problem is you will end up with a visible seam on your fabric. And so to me, I think that continuous fabric with no seam creates a lot more versatility because you can wrap it a million ways without seeing a seam anywhere. Keep in mind that you're gonna end up with a lot of excess fabric because let's say for example, your fabric is 60 inches wide. Your scarf only needs to be like 20 to 25 inches wide. So you're gonna end up with three yards of 40 inches wide. I ended up making a skirt and a top out of that excess fabric, but you could split this project with a friend. You take one half, she takes the other half. The full length is the way to go, but you will end up with extra fabric that you can do whatever you want with. Alrighty, so here is my fabulous three yards of fabric. I actually got this fuzzy stuff from Joann's and it was amazing. They have tons of knits, so hit up your local Joann's and see what they have. The one thing you wanna make sure is you're not getting something that's like a loose woven knit that looks like it's gonna unravel on you. This cut clean, which was amazing. So first thing I did is fold it in half and I measured 22 inches. That's the width that I decided. So on one side, I measured 22 and gave myself a little notch. I went to the other side and I'm cutting, looking at where I'm going. If you look at my eyes, I am looking at the notch and that's it. Naturally, if you do that, you will automatically go exactly to that point. Of course, if you're more comfortable, you can mark it, you can put pins, you can measure all along. But to me, that's always a pretty good bet and it worked great. Now, time to figure out whether this uh, length of fabric was enough or too much. I wasn't sure when I first bought it. So I grabbed it around my wrist and kind of held it and wrapped it around a couple times. I was like, all right, I can wrap it twice and that's good. I did one looser and I was like, well, that's a little long. Okay, if I wanna do only one wrap, then that's way too long. I decided when all was said and done that I actually liked the way it looked with the double wrap and so I was gonna leave the full length. Now, like I said, my fabric cut clean, but I wanted to try to rough up the edges a little bit so that it matched the selvage edge, which I decided to keep because it has this like tiny little frayed edge and it looks super cute. So I intentionally frayed the other end, but luckily for me, the fabric I got does not fray. And you'll be able to tell that simply by looking at the cut edge of your fabric on the bolt. Now, time to close up our sleeves. 12 inches is the dimension that I chose, and given that I added a little cuff to it, it was perfect for me. But you can measure from your wrist to where you think you want it closed. I wouldn't recommend going much higher than the crook of your elbow. That's about the right height to give you a lot of flexibility. I'm gonna pin those two sides closed. So obviously you folded it face to face. I pinned it all the way up to 12 inches, and then that little gather is what's gonna happen when it gets sewn into my cuff. So I needed to cut material for the cuff. Here it is right here. I just made a four inch cuff. I thought maybe I'll fold it in half like this. Maybe I won't, I'll decide that later. But I wrapped it around my wrist just to get a measurement. I'm sure you've noticed I'm pretty loosey goosey with this stuff. If you are more comfortable taking specific measurements and plotting things out, please do that. But for me, I feel like uh, this is my vibe. Now I'm obviously just sewing clothes, those two 12 inch pieces and let's see what we got. Okay, so we are obviously gonna put the cuff to create a more fitted cuff and a ballooned effect, but let's just see if what we've done is at least the right length. So we're just gonna flip these guys inside out. Oh, 
Pins on the floor. My husband loves that. All right, so one hand in. Air, like a little long, because it's, oh, that's kind of cool though. Do we want it long? Do we? Okay, now could wrap twice if I want, and also could create a top out of it, and you'll see that in a minute. Man, I wanted the, I wanted the cuff, but like, do I not want the cuff? Okay, I looked in the mirror closer up. I am gonna do the cuff mainly because I feel like when I stand like this, it almost just looks like the scarf, like my arms aren't in it and the scarf is just down and wrapping. Whereas I think if I put the cuff, it really gives the effect that it's this cool kind of billowy sleeve top situation. Which means we've got to do the cuff. So here is the cuff that I had. What you want to do is fold it face to face so that you're creating a little tube. So we're just going to fold it in half and do a simple straight stitch going down the side. This is turning our fabric into a little tube that will become our cuff. Now, if I decide I want to fold it in half like this, I will do it. And this is how it'll look on my wrist. If I decide I want to leave it open, I'll do that. But I've got my cuff. So all of this fabric is what has to get gathered and condensed down to fit the size of that cuff right there. You can do a basting stitch and then pull on the stitch in order to gather, or you can do what I did, which is create intentional pleats. Totally up to you. This felt easier to me for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and so that's what I decided to do. I just pleated it up until it was the same, roughly the same distance as my cuff. And now I'm going to sew the pleats into place. This part is a little bit like crunchy and difficult because the cuff itself or the, the diameter of the wrist is so small that it can't fit around that like base of my sewing machine. I had to kind of sew it and push it and fold it and try to not sew the back at the same time. So just do your best to be careful. Um, sew it around if you need to work in phases, then do that. Now, in order to add the cuff, you're gonna flip the cuff inside out and slide it up into the sleeve. This is making it face to face, right? The right side of my cuff to the right side of my sleeve. You're gonna line up the side seam of both so that the seams are in the same place and then basically just evenly distribute and pin it. We are gonna sew all the way around here in a circle, sewing our cuff to the end of our sleeve. This is the same thing. This is the part that got a little hard. The first three or four inches is easy. Then you start getting in it and it's kind of giving you a hard time. Take it out. Take a look at the small little area that you haven't finished and just put it back in. Start fresh. It will be a lot easier if you do the cuff in sections just because of how small it is. It's just, you know, it's a little crunchy in there. Now, we're going to take it and try it on. Voila, here we go, this is perfect. I end up making the cuff a little bit tighter, but this is the basic vibe and it was super easy. And also I decided not to fold it. I'm just gonna leave it its full length with a raw edge, done. Now, I wanted to take all of this excess fabric and see if I could make a little top, something that I could wear underneath it so that when I don't want it to be kind of sexier, I've got a little bit more coverage. I just eyeballed it. I think I made it like maybe 12 inches long. Then I wrapped it around my body and was like, that feels about right. And I cut that. I cut two pieces into straps. I mean, really, none of this stuff has to be super specific, especially when you're working with stretch fabric. It's so forgiving. So, you know, take the pressure off. Just have a little bit of fun with it. I sewed up the back seam, which gave me a tube top basically. And now I'm taking my strips of, my, this is my fabric for my straps, right? I'm folding them together, sewing them. And to flip them inside out, you take a safety pin, you pin it to the edge and you put it inside the tube. You sort of scrunch the fabric along the safety pin and keep going, keep going, keep going till you get to the end. Once you get to the end, pull on it and the whole thing flips inside out. And voila, we have little spaghetti straps for our tube top that we are going to turn into a tank top. Here is uh, the tube top. I folded down the top about one inch and I'm gonna stitch it all the way around so the top is has a binding. It looks nice and clean finished. What I like to do anytime I do this is I always like to pin the straps onto the back only. By pinning them onto the back, you'll see in a minute, I have the ability to adjust the fit a little bit better. So as I'm doing this stitch and going all the way around, I'm just stitching that back strap in on both sides, working my way all the way around, and then we're gonna try it on. Now you can see it's attached to the back and now I can kind of pull on it and look at the front and be like, is, do I want them in the center? Do I want them out? Do I want to crisscross them? How does that feel? Is that too tight? You're going to pin them both in place and then just like move around. Make sure that the right and the left feel like they're both the same level of tightness and you're good to go. Stitch that guy down into the existing stitch line and you are done. I'm going to show you guys a little TikTok I posted uh, when I first tried it on and I was obsessed. Oh my God, look what I just made. The skirt was kind of like an afterthought, so I'm not sure if I love the skirt yet, but this top situation, I'm sorry, but I look rich. Look at this zhuzhi teddy bear fabric. I could wear it with like jeans, 
tell me this isn't the most beautiful top for fall. Black leather pants, floral skirt with knee-high boots. Oh my God. Okay. Now, there are a bunch of ways to wrap this and I'm gonna show you all of them right now, but I wanna talk about a couple things. Number one, I'm not sure the boots I'm gonna do. I've gotta figure that out. Number two, this skirt is the skirt that I made with the leftover fabric. I didn't actually think it was gonna be cute and I didn't actually think it was gonna work. Uh, so I didn't film it, but don't worry. It is so cute and it worked so well and it was so easy that I'm just gonna make it an entire video. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a skirt like this in all types of different fabrics. So if you like this, just make sure that you stay tuned to the channel so that you can learn how to make it. It's super cute and it's amazing in this knit material and it's like insanely comfortable. Okay. I also made a top, and so I'm gonna put the top on so that I can show you how I wrapped it. But without a top underneath, it is really sexy, and like you could tape it, and if you wanted, you could pin things, but it's it's pretty good. It's like staying in place. Here is that top, obviously a standalone piece, but gonna be really good so that I can kind of demo it. So here we go. Put your wrist through. Now, you wanna drape it first to create whatever kind of sleeve you want. Obviously, the looser this is, the more the sleeve falls down. You could make it tight. Like really, it's, it's up to you. I want like that. That feels good. So I'm wrapping it around the back and you're gonna wrap it. You could just do it again so this just becomes a big scarf and you can sort of put it underneath the turtleneck so that this weight holds it down. Just like adjust, get in the mirror and kind of play with it. Now, this is one option. I wonder if I should put jeans on so that we can kind of see the difference between the fabrics because it's all one. You could also pull this tighter, right? So you have two layers. You have a scarf here and then kind of like almost like that infinity scarf look. You could also take this and like this goes this way, this goes this way, just like that. All right, let's do another one. Let's leave this here, wrap it three times into like a big fat scarf. I mean, we certainly have enough length for that. Oh. So now you always wanna finagle this so that this is like flattering, like a big oversized. It could be over like a graphic t-shirt and jeans. Next one, wide across the back like this. Keep it wide like a shawl. Wrap it this way so we've got like a full shirt. Do we have enough to come all the way back? It's like a full shirt. And I can still move my arms, so I'm not like stuck. Arms move. Then I turned it into a hood, and does this not feel like Dune? Like this, like, this could be like a Dune costume for Halloween. It's really kind of fab. I mean, any fabric you want, it would be so good. I was just editing this, and I realized I didn't show my favorite way to wear it, which is in this little TikTok. So to do that, you're gonna leave the shoulder. So you're gonna leave it like this so it's straight across the back. Now we're gonna go around as a scarf like this, right? We're here. So we've got our scarf. We're gonna pull it a little bit looser, not too tight. This one, you want to open it up again so it's going on the shoulder and kind of drape it like this so that it is also hanging down here. And then this part comes back around. This, I want underneath because I want this weight to hold the sleeve down I want a drape like this and I want this across. Okay, last one. I just wanna show it like jeans and a t-shirt because so far we've only styled it as like a full matching set. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Wrap it once kind of tight, then once kind of loose and voila. It's so beautiful. Look at this top. Oh, you gotta do it. You just gotta do it. And the way that it feels on, really it creates like this amazing sort of relaxed, luxury feeling. Like it feels expensive and it feels cool, like unique and cool, but so comfortable that your body will just feel so relaxed. I really hope that you guys give this a shot. If this was your first video, I hope that I, uh, I suckered you into subscribing. I do really, really fun videos and fun content. And my goal is always to make it really doable for everybody. So I hope that you'll join me on this little journey we've got here at the DIY Designer and have a beautiful week, man. I love you guys. I'll see you here next week. Mwah. Adios.